Well, hello. Today's theme is going to have a royal flavour because, of course, it's been uh, a royal week uh, in many ways. Uh, the Queen uh, celebrating her 95th birthday uh, and then, more sadly, the weekend before, uh, sitting through uh, her husband's funeral service. So I'm going to use uh, a few royal quotes uh, as we look at the Bible about hope. Uh, so let me read you these verses and, and then reflect on some of the uh, royal issues of the last week and then pray uh, that God will fill us, uh, if we're feeling particularly hopeless, fill us with his amazing hope. So here's the Bible reading for today. It's the first book of Peter and chapter one and verses three and four. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth to a living hope. So it's the born again experience, the new birth that leads to the guarantee of a hope that lives. It's a never dying hope taking us through life and through the jaws of death into eternity. Uh, and so uh, Peter explains that by saying, well, it's through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. In other words, it's because Jesus conquered death, we can conquer death, both now and forever and ever. And then verse four, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. So it won't uh, be destroyed uh, over time, like a piece of rubber perishing. Uh, it won't fade like a piece of cloth that's been exposed too much to the sunlight. It's not going to fail in some way, break, crack, grow mouldy. Nothing's going to go wrong with this inheritance. It's the eternal life that will be preserved wonderfully forever and ever. Notice that this hope is guaranteed by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the phrase Peter uses. Now, it's interesting when they give Jesus his full title like that, the Lordship of Jesus, Jesus from Matthew 121. You'll call his name Jesus because he'll save his people from their sins. Christ, uh, meaning the anointed one, the, the sent one, uh, the one we're to expect to come as our deliverer, the Lord Jesus Christ. I was thinking about titles this week. I was quite amused to read of Prince Philip's titles, uh, which were published in preparation for his funeral service. Uh, here are some of the more obscure titles of uh, Prince Philip you may not uh, be aware of. Uh, he is known as the Grand Commander of the Order of Maritime Merit of the San Francisco Port Authority. Imagine, what, what kind of title is that? Uh, amazing, among his many royal titles. Um, here's another one, the Grand Cross in Brilliance of the Order of the Sun of Peru, a Latin American country celebrating Prince Philip. Uh, and here's my particular favourite from Japan, the Grand Cordon of the Supreme Order of the Chrysanthemum. Well, what a title that is. All of them are meant in these various cultures to say, this guy's special. He's not just any old person. We want to recognise in his title who he is. That's what Peter's doing. He's recognising in the title of Jesus that this just isn't royalty. It's royalty plus, plus, plus. In fact, it's humanity and divinity even greater than royalty. This is a superpower. This is Jesus we're talking about here. No ordinary person, no one like him in all of history, no one before him, no one who ever came after him. He is the ultimate one. And therefore we can trust him because he's the one who came alive on the first Easter Sunday from the dead. And he's the one who guarantees our living hope. One of the sad things about royalty of this uh, last week has been the scene at the funeral service of the Queen sitting alone. I, I know of people who, when they saw that, burst into tears. I, I know for me, I was both deeply sad and hugely angry at this woman in her 90s 
saying goodbye to her husband of 70 plus years on her own. And I was angry because, not just for her, but for the thousands of funeral services that have taken place in this year with these same draconian restrictions. And the sheer absurdity of the Queen's situation, though of course she should be honoured for modelling what we've all had to suffer with, and so she didn't declare herself as superior to any of that, she, she went through it with us as a society. The appalling injustice of it was that on the same day, while the Queen's sitting alone in a huge chapel, St George's, with just 30 other people surrounding her, not really very close, millions were thronging into shops, crowding into them and shopping. Just the Sunday before, several hundred people had gathered in cathedrals up and down the service, up and down the, the country in services uh, to celebrate a, a Christian faith on the Sunday. And so clearly, uh, you can have 250 people in a cathedral for Sunday worship, but only 30 at a funeral. It's a good job the virus stays away from Sunday worship and just turns up when there's a funeral service. I mean, it is beyond bizarre. It's cruel and unusual punishment. And it highlights uh, the sheer uh, insanity of some of the restrictions, and not just insane in a quirky way, but the deep cruelty on people at their most hurting and suffering. Uh, and so the picture of the Queen alone uh, wrenched hearts and, and made people feel, as I say, very sad and very angry uh, about the completely unnecessary pain through which she must have had to suffer, uncomforted in that very public situation under the glare of national publicity and the cameras scattered throughout the chapel. So, it must have felt pretty hopeless. In the face of death, we need hope. We need the encouragement of one another, family and friends around us to support us. But mostly we need the fact that death has been defeated. Now this matters not just for funerals, but for every bit of the COVID death data we're exposed to every day because we've heard more about death in the last year. It's been more on our screens, more in our newspapers, more in our face than perhaps ever before in our lifetime. People haven't talked about death quite so much all the time and in the end it can become overwhelming. People become fearful. So as Christians we face death and perhaps even in this last year or so you have lost a loved one, perhaps from Covid, perhaps from cancer, perhaps from a heart condition or uh, simply a great age. However, whether young or old, it's been a personal tragedy for you and it's felt a bit hopeless and a bit dark and very sad. And so we remind ourselves today that the Lord Jesus Christ is triumphant over death itself and that we as we are in him are guaranteed an eternity which won't rot or spoil or disappear but is certain and true so today we claim that hope in the face of death we claim that victory in the face of despair and i pray that today you will know that living hope as a lived experience, a daily experience, and that that grace will be yours in this week. So please let me pray for you. Father, thank you for the opportunity to celebrate on hope, the living hope which you have provided. And I pray that today, everyone listening and watching this, however deep their pain, however dark their soul feels, however turbulent their emotional life right now. Grant a wonderful filling right now of your living hope. Thank you that you love us and want us to both know that hope in reality and we want to be filled with it today by your grace. So do that for us, Jesus, we pray in your loving and powerful name.